Hey, Bill, what's up? Hey, Tom. So I can't get past the, the idea that we are somehow standing in a burning house and we are always consumed with the latest precious article of our possession to catch on fire instead of why the house is burning in the first place. And it seems to me that all of these fights against corruption, no matter what we do with trying to elect good principal politicians and monitor their activities and put rules and ethical codes and processes in place, aren't really going to amount to much unless we get to the root of the problem, which is the money. It feels to me like as money has concentrated, as our corporate structures have consolidated, and we have seen the rise of megacorps and chain stores that would have boggled the minds of a Vanderbilt, um, we've seen corruption at whole new levels, the emergence of American oligarchs like the Walmart family uh, that destroyed our entire system that can essentially warp a party, uh, warp both parties. And it strikes me that even though we have fantastic politicians like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren that have raised structural change, I mean, Warren has even proposed nationalizing production of generic drugs. No one is really talking about how we can get back what we used to have, which was, ironically, an actual free market. Yeah. Um, where you'd have local competitors instead of chain stores, you'd have or something that resembled it. Bill, if if I can interrupt yeah. you, the 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 problem that you're defining was literally caused by the Supreme Court. Not wanting to sound like a complete Supreme Court monomaniac here this morning, but um, it, it, after the Nixon bribery scandals in '73 and '74. The, in 75 and 76, Congress passed numerous good government laws, a whole bunch of them that regulated money in politics. In 1976, the Supreme Court struck those down, or struck down many of them, in the Buckley decision when they decided for the very first time in the history of the United States that a billionaire spending his money to influence politicians was the same thing as you or I writing a letter to a politician. It was free, or speaking in public. It was free speech. And then two years later in the, in the first National Bank uh, decision, they said, by the way, we extend that logic to corporations. That was in 78. Now, what, that, what those two decisions, those twin decisions, 76 and 78 did, is they opened the floodgates in 1979 and 1980 for billionaires and big corporations to pour money into the federal political system. And that's exactly what happened. And it brought us Ronald Reagan and a Republican-controlled Congress and has, has you know that and that spigot has not been turned off since and then and then the supreme court doubled down on that in october 2010 with citizens united so i completely agree with you but this is a problem by and large created by the court itself i agree with you on the side of limiting the corruption but i disagree in the sense that what we're not addressing still is the rise of this consolidated corporate power Oh, well, that's the consolidation. Be, that's there was GTE Sylvania was the case where, where the Supreme Court said yes. that the only thing that you should, that, you know, even though Congress passed the Sherman Antitrust Act and the Anti-Monopoly Act and the Clayton Act, even though, you know, Congress passed all those laws that said that uh, corporations can't get too big because it's destructive to communities, it's destructive consu to consumers, it's, construct it's destructive to employees, it's destructive to the institution of the corporation itself. <laughs> Even though Congress passed all those laws, the Supreme Court said, we agree with Robert Bork's logic, and which was adopted by the Reagan administration in 81, we agree with that logic, and, and from now on, the only legal basis that the government can use to break up a big corporation is if it's hurting the consumer. In other words, if the price that the consumer pays for products. Again, another problem brought to you in part by the Supreme Court bill. Now, can you imagine what our country would be like if we had a law that limited chain sizes to 10 stores? Oh, yeah. Well, we did at one time. I mean, by and large, and 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 you know, uh, I mean, in fact, there was there were two shoe companies. Um, I believe Buster Brown, and I'm forgetting the name of the other one, McKinney, maybe. Um, this was back in the 1960s that were forbidden mm -hmm. by the Commerce Department from merging because between the two of them, they would have controlled seven percent of the shoe market. I mean, that's right. how aggressively we used to enforce the 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 the, the anti-monopoly laws. And now you've got, you know, four airlines that control most of the airline market. You've got, you know, one Internet service provider that controls about half the country. Uh, you've, I mean, you, you just pick your, pick your thing. You know, 80% of the products in a, in a supermarket are controlled by fewer than a dozen companies. Uh, it just, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And again, well, you know. Fair, 
the fear is that we are now at what three generations of Americans who have not seen actual competition among stores where their choices are basically that's right it all it all it all started falling apart in in the early 1980s as a result of all this money and 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 these supreme court decisions yes so how do we stop it well i think that we need we need a political revolution you know to borrow bernie's phrase he's been saying for a long time it's these are not things that can be fixed around the edges and particularly now that you know mcconnell has been successful in withholding i think it was 143 judges from from obama trump has now appointed more federal judges than any president in the history of the united states because of this crime that uh, uh, that McConnell committed against uh, against the Constitution, frankly, and against Obama. Um, you know, this is a tough one, and we we have to be progressives need to be figuring out how to deal with an out of control court system, including an out of control Supreme Court, and we need to do it pretty damn quick. But it's going to take a political revolution. You know, whether it's whether it's Bernie, whether it's Elizabeth Warren, whether, you know, whoever it may be, it's it's it, this is not the sort of thing that we will be able to solve with by simply passing a law next week. But there are solutions. There are ways this can be taken on.